Good evening. Welcome. My name is Brock Chakmak. I'm the Dean of Fashion. Uh, well, I just wanted to uh, say, first of all, thank you for joining us. Uh, on behalf of Parsons School of Fashion, we are delighted to welcome all of you to an evening to celebrate the new school's partnership with GIRA Foundation. Tonight's event is titled Designing for Second Chances, Creative Approaches to Preventing Recidivism. The Parsons and the New School Partnership with the GIRA Foundation arose through a mutual commitment to deepen our understanding of the social and systemic issues affecting today's prisons. Tonight, we are here to share with you about a creative initiative between School of Fashion and GIRA Bag Brand, a GIRA Bag Foundation run uh, program at uh, Chipinang State Jail in Indonesia. Did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> As part of the collaboration, Parsons students are designing a bag for the Jira bag brand for inmates to produce, which will generate funds to help them improve their lives and thereby reduce recidivism. We will be announcing the student award winner later in tonight's program. And special thanks to the generous support of BNI, Medco Energy, and Nomura, as well as to our colleagues in the Office of Corporate Partnerships. So this event is part of the Nth Degree series, Creative Minds, Creating Change, a curated series of events featuring thinkers, visionaries, and creators who bring uh, about positive change in the world and redefining the cutting edge. The series continues the new school's century-long tradition of forward thinking by spotlighting lectures, performances, panels, and other public programs that galvanize curious minds. So joining us this evening are Mary Crippen, the board member of Rikers Debate Project and a director of its women's facility class and upcoming Spanish language class, as well as Saj Rahman, who directs the Institute for Transformative Mentoring, a training program for credible messengers who use their experience to work with young adults to reduce incarceration and violence. And finally, Yami Tema Lau, you can call him Tema, <laughs> Uh, the chairman of the JIRA Foundation. Our moderator for the evening is Brandon McCarthy. Brandon is assistant professor of fashion and the program director for the BFA in fashion systems and materiality. His work examines critical social issues in relation to fashion and sustainable systems design. Brandon advocates for human beings to be considered at the center of all aspects of fashion systems uh, design, including material sourcing, labor, production, design, distribution, media, and communication, as a way to empower students to be an agent for positive and sustainable social change uh, through the use of fashion discipline. So please join me in welcoming tonight's panel. Uh, thanks very much, Barack, for uh, those opening remarks, and thanks so much uh, to our panelists uh, for being here. Um, as Barack mentioned, uh, at Parsons, uh, we have a deep commitment to positive social change in relationship to our design program, and uh, we have a pathway within our fashion program uh, that is a systems design pathway, but it's specifically uh, designed to engage critical social issues. And uh, so we're, we're so honored uh, to have you here. And um, maybe uh, we'd start the evening uh, a little bit by discussing a bit of our backgrounds. And if you could share um, a little more about who you are and where you come from. And uh, it would be fantastic if you could give us a deeper understanding of your organization as well and, and your approach. Mary, maybe we'll start with you. Sure, thanks. Um, and I also wanted to say thanks to the Parsons School of Fashion and the JIRA Foundation for hosting this event, as well as to my fellow panelists. I'm really excited to hear more about what you're all doing. Um, so my name's Mary Crippen, and my background's in healthcare. I actually work in healthcare data at a nonprofit in the Bronx. Um, but I'm also a debater. So in high school and college, I was a member of the debate team, um, both in Georgia and then again at NYU. And we participated in a form of debate called parliamentary. Um, and then a year ago, I heard about this organization, the Rikers Debate Project, uh, which was started by a group of former parliamentary debaters who wanted to teach competitive debate in jails and prisons in New York City. Um, so we started our first facility uh, class at GRVC on Rikers Island last summer. And we've since expanded to two more facilities on Rikers Island. 
Um, we also have a class at the Fortune Society, and we just opened a class in DC uh, last week. Um, on top of that, we're starting a Spanish language class in a couple of weeks. So we're growing very quickly. Um, and you know, I really feel very passionately about working for the Rikers Debate Project because debate meant so much for me when I was in college. And I really owe a lot of where I am now to the fact that I learned how to speak in public, that I learned how to think on my feet, um, critical thinking, questioning myself, you know, seeing all angles of an issue. It's all been incredibly important to my success. And so we wanted to share some of that skill with people who are incarcerated or formerly incarcerated. Um, we really feel that through debate, you learn a lot of different things. It's not just about learning how to speak publicly, which of course is very important, especially for someone who's coming out with a more difficult job prospect than the average person and really needs that confidence to be able to go to a job interview and advocate for themselves and their skills. Um, we also think that critical thinking is, is very important and really being able to see all sides of an issue, um, to be able to question your own beliefs, to engage thoughtfully with people who disagree with you, especially today, I think that's extremely important for all of us. Um, and so, yeah, we're just, we're very happy to bring those skills that we've all benefited from so much to people who really need it. Thank you so much. And maybe uh, we could just pass the mic to Tema. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Yami Tema. Uh, people call me Tema. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Parsons School of Design for this uh, great opportunity for us to introduce Jira to, uh, to you all. And thank you to Mr. Brandon and uh, my fellow panelists. Uh, for this chance for us to uh, be here in this lovely country and this lovely city, New York. Uh, I'm from Indonesia, a country in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's an uh, archipelago country, a number of economy in, in, in Asia. So uh, it's a very long trip actually to be here. Uh, we we came from Indonesia with the Jira uh, Jira Foundation uh, to introduce to you to to the Parsons School of Design and to New York about our program a program that is uh, about the inmates uh, about the inmates that uh, the people that is marginalized uh, by an institution that the people there they are forgotten and 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 we want to uh, bring our our message to to the Parsons School of Design and to you all that the inmates uh, there or inmates anywhere in the world are also humans and they also need a second chance that's that's the the, the message that Jira is uh, born from so uh, we we make bags we make uh, coffee we make uh, we have jira water for metal water we have many products but for this event uh, we like to uh, say that we we bring the jira bags and the jira designs that that we bring from our country and to uh promote our our ways to uh the person's school of design and to give uh uh apa sakti uh untuk yeah the the competition the competition the design competition yeah sorry for i sometimes get black when i speak in english <laughs> so i think that the jira is uh Jiro was brought to me about two years ago. Uh, they 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 gave me uh, an an ex inmate brought me a bag, a bag of uh, wh what they made. I said, uh, "This is a bag for you." I said, "What what's this bag? Uh, why you give me a bag? It's it's made from uh, an inmate in Chipinang Prison." I said, "What a, a bag from Chipinang Prison? It was a very nice bag." So that made me interested. And I went to the Chipinang prison, and that's the first time in my life I went to prison. I was a bit scared to go actually inside a prison. 
So I, when I went inside, it was uh, not what I think of the inmates. They were very friendly, very nice uh, people. So that made me uh, want it to do something, to to do something about this program. So we we I called my friends. We I called several fellow uh, fellow uh, fellows, and here we are uh, to bring the zero away to you. Thank you. So thank you all for having me. So we started this program here at the New School. It's called the Institute for Transformative Mentoring. Uh, we started about a year and a half ago. The program, to give you a little background, first I should explain this term called credible messengers. It's a term that's being used in a city and is starting to uh, be used in other cities across the country. And it's a term that's being referred to formerly incarcerated people who have turned their lives around, who now want to give back to their communities. So instead of being a force, a negative force in their communities, they want to sort of give back now and be a positive force. So this credible messenger workforce is now growing um, across the city. It's estimated that there's around 1,200 people who sort of define themselves as credible messengers employed um, in New York City. Most of the employers are social service agencies and different government agencies. And they are employed in three sort of major employment categories. One category is what we call cure violence. Now, cure violence is a public health model that looks at violence as a public health issue. So it actually roots, stems from um, certain public health uh, officials who tracked um, the spread of HIV in Africa and recognized that it was often a very few amount of people who were sort of responsible the spread. Focus on those individuals and uh, give them resources, give them education, give them medication, um, you could dramatically reduce the spread. So they approached violence in a similar way and said, oftentimes violence is perpetrated by a very small group of people within a community. So if you target those people, give them resources, give them training, give them support, um, you can dramatically change um, the spread of violence. Secure violence workers um, are some of the first responders. So after, say, a shooting or stabbing, they have clearance to go into the ER after the person stabilized. And at that moment, um, this credible messenger who used to be from this neighborhood can go up to this younger person and say, you may have heard of me, or your dad may have heard of me. And um, I can tell you right now, look at, look at the situation you're in. Do you want to continue this pathway? You can end up dead, or you can end up in prison like me. Or you could make this shift today. I know the leaders of the opposition that uh, gang that you're rivaling with, and I'm willing to set up a truce. And so they're going in and setting up these truces. So this is sort of one major employment category um, that's called cure violence. Another big area is called mentoring. And so these are all the diversion programs. So these are young people, instead of being sent into prisons, where they often are traumatized further and end up back um, in prison, they're saying instead we're going to divert them into these other programs and we're going to give them counseling and rehabilitation. And the counselors are going to be people who are formerly incarcerated. So these formerly incarcerated people are being trained as counselors. Um, they get trained in a cognitive behavioral therapy curriculum that was developed by the California Correction Association actually. And, and so they're now actually in doing the actual counseling work. And then the third category sort of catch me or everything from like art therapy, but other types of alternative healing pra uh, practices. So these workers, most of them only have GEDs. And so now with this partnership with the new school and a few foundations, we are now thinking about how to get them both uh, vocation specific training as well as um, actual cr credits towards um, getting degrees. And so this is a, both an on-ramp towards higher ed, as well as um, training that's very specific to their roles. Um, just briefly to say what that is, is so one is element of our curriculum is called restorative practices. So instead of thinking about just incarceration as the only way, we think about restorative practices. Are there alternative ways in which we can think about how we deal with grievances, how we deal with um, certain types of social problems, how do we mediate conflicts? Uh, then we think about, uh, we go into trauma, right, and trauma-informed care. How do we actually work with young people who've been experiencing so much trauma? Poverty produces trauma. 
uh, mass incarceration produces trauma. And so if we start to actually start looking at the root issues of what troubles a lot of these young people, then we can start to actually prevent the pipeline, right? prevent them from going to prison in the first place. And then from there, we go into historical trauma, give them more of a historical understanding, which also gives people a bigger sense of their, of their selves and an understanding of the world. And then um, we finish off with um, some basic psychology concepts around adolescent brain development. And then we end the course with workforce readiness skills, thinking about how to manage in a work setting. Um, a lot of them, uh, you know, our students are average, spent 18 years in prison. And so just readjusting to a work setting can be challenging. So how do we think about, um, you know, managing up, managing sideways, healthy communication with your coworkers and colleagues? Uh, those kinds of so soft skills as often referred to. So that's uh, our program here. Great, thank you all so much. Um, I think Saja leads perfectly into my next question. I wanted to dig a little deeper and maybe Tema, we could start with you about what you feel are the most important skills uh, that those who are incarcerated need to avoid recidivism. Um, and maybe if you could give us a deeper sense of how you teach those skills through your program and maybe Mary could follow up to give us a little deeper insight to your program afterwards. Um, preventing recidivism is, uh, is a very tough t task, uh, especially in Indonesia. Well, there is a very high, high rate of recidivism in, in Indonesia. The, the first thing that I think we can do to to prevent them is uh, first in, in Jira we we make a pro character building program first. Well, we make a character building program. We teach them how to to behave. Uh, we teach them uh, how to treat other people. We have uh, worked with uh, psychologists and many social workers. So uh, that's the first step, of course, and then. Uh, the next step is we we give them formal education, but the uh, formal education for those who uh, haven't got a fair uh, education system, maybe in their past. And then uh, the next step we we like to we teach them some skills uh, skills. Uh, some we teach them how to uh, make coffee, barista. Some we teach them to make bags and. and and other type of skills. So that's why we have our zero ways. There's eight C's in there. Maybe uh, it'll, it'll be said in the presentation later. Uh, that that's that's the main uh, the 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 most important thing I think is the character building, because many of the inmates there uh, came to uh, went to jail because of uh, they haven't got an uh, taught by their their community about treating others and et cetera, et cetera. I guess that's all. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Mary, you talked about the importance of um, not only being able to articulate ideas, but being able to understand different sides of an argument um, and how to think about uh, engaging critically uh, and teaching critical thinking. Do, could you expand a little more on that and maybe how your program works? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, one thing I want to point out first is that Rikers Island is sort of a special place because it's actually not a prison, it's a jail. So the majority of people that we teach and the majority of people on the island are innocent. They're awaiting trial. So it's not just that we're working with people who have been convicted of crimes and are serving their time, and we do have some students that fall in that bucket, but a lot of people are just trying to survive Rikers Island and not stay there and not come back. Um, and you know, there, it's, it's terrible because uh, the majority of people who actually have to serve or have to await trial in a jail will end up uh, pleading guilty. And it, it's because they wanna leave. So, you know, when I talk about skill building, it's, it's hard because it's not just people who are trying to reform themselves from being a criminal. Some of them aren't criminals and they're just trying to not have their lives destroyed by the system. So, uh, the, you know, the critical thinking aspect I think is, is really important for a few reasons. Um, primarily, we just want people to be able to spend their time better. 
you know, Rikers is a horrible place to have to live, especially if you don't know what's happening to you. You don't even know if you'll end up in prison. You don't know if you're going to be convicted. Um, there's a lot of unknowns and you're just waiting. So we try to give them a space where they can maybe forget that they're incarcerated for a few hours and think about something at a higher level, have elevated conversations about topics that maybe they haven't been exposed to. Um, you know, we always provide them with some materials on the topic that we're discussing so they have a chance to read background and learn things because, of course, they don't have a lot of access to materials while they're inside. Um, but I think, yeah, being able to see other perspectives is completely vital just to life in general, uh, but also to not making your experience on Rikers Island worse, because the worst thing that can happen is that you do fall down the path of getting in conflicts with people, being involved in violence, and then getting another sentence on top of the one that you may already be getting, because it's just such a hard place to be. So anything we can do to try to channel people's energies into something productive, especially with conflict resolution and being able to see multiple sides and empathize with the person that you're fighting with. Um, I think that's of the utmost importance. Um, and the way we do this, we have a, a curriculum where we build on a bunch of different types of uh, debate skills. So some of them focus on how to look at evidence. Um, some of them are just about thinking on your feet. We have a lot of public speaking types of exercises that we emphasize. And the one that our students hate the most, but that we try to do as often as possible, is we'll take a topic, we'll pull them and say, OK, who agrees with this, who disagrees with this? And then we'll switch sides, and we'll make them argue against what they think. And they absolutely hate it, but it makes for the best debates. And a lot of people come out of it not changing their minds, because that's asking a lot, but they can at least empathize a little bit with the people on the other side of the aisle and start to understand the logic behind why they think the way they do. So I see that as a success on some level. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. And I mean, one thing I'm picking up from all of your different organizations is how you take uh, long-term approaches uh, to really complex issues, and that it seems uh, that you take uh, a systemic understanding that s critical issues aren't isolated. There, there are so many different interrelated parts uh, in someone's life that affects uh, different sets of outcomes. And at Parsons, I think one of the biggest um, moments for us within our curricular development is helping students understand the idea that uh, their design decisions have interrelated parts and affect so many different parts of not only their immediate community and their lives, but other people when their designs go out into the world, how they're produced. Um, but maybe uh, if you would, maybe Saj, you could start talking uh, a little bit in relationship to this about how your organization partners with other organizations and how you approach that idea uh, of systems thinking through collaboration. Sure, thank you. Uh, we have uh, 10 different other organizations that we partner with. And uh, what was fortunate about uh, our development is that um, three of those partners um, were at the table from day one. And so we had brought them in. We wanted the employees to be part of this development process. And so what we did is we created an advisory board and that also included um, our primary funder. And so representatives from the, um, these three organizations, along with the primary funder and then uh, the new school team here, um, we started, um, you know, having meetings around, you know, what are the skills that we really want to see developed here, right, with the students? Um, what is our long-term goals? Um, uh, you know, how are we really thinking about um, both the reduction of recidivism, but as well as um, real quality of life? Um, how is there? How is it going to be possible to create real gainful employment? Oftentimes, many of the programs that exist um, are putting people in employment roles that, are, of course, all work is important, but it's not really gainful. Um, there is no real career path, mm -hmm. and so um, and when you have certain students who um, we're used to making a certain amount of income, and in this expensive city, it's very challenging um, thinking really strategically about are there real prospects for the future. Um, when you think about social services, it's expected, you know, 350,000 jobs in the next, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, so it's a sector that's obviously growing. Um, and so here is an opportunity for us to really think about um, developing a skill set 
um, with the workers and the students. They could be um, partnerships going forward. I think when we had these three initial partnerships, um, they uh, sort of uh, set the tone, and so other employers wanted to be part of it. Given that um, the city government is also um, a major employer and and is also subconscious out to these agencies, and there's a commitment with this current um, administration to support this this workforce. Um, this was we were literally situated perfectly to fill a gap that was that was uh, that hadn't been filled before. Thank you. Tema, maybe you could follow up. I mean, tonight is a, an amazing example of a new collaboration that's being born, but maybe you could give us a sense of the different uh, partners uh, you work with and how you collaborate and how that relates to your vision for, for JIRA. Uh, yeah, one of the eight Cs that I uh, mentioned before about the JIRA is, is actually collaboration. One of the Cs is collaboration. So uh, we realize in Jiro that uh, we can't do this alone. So we have to collaborate with many partners, with governments uh, and uh, private sectors. Because one uh, in, in Jiro, we we try to uh, create something that can fund uh, our cause. Uh, we we have to create a business. Not zero is as is a non profit organization, but we have to create. Uh, we have to make money to run the foundation, and, and that's where we partner with the private sector. So there's a lot of challenges uh, there uh, in um, a business uh, wise uh, program where Jira is a non, 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 non-profit organization and we have to think how our partners can uh, make money and, and, and profit from uh, the business that we offer them. So uh, there are many challenges uh, that we, we have to face uh, so far in, in our, our program, but uh, there is a very interesting thing that uh, emerged when I, I tried to uh, make a business from this, uh, this, this program. People tend to like the, the cause. So it's, it's easier to, to, mm, to bring this business uh, to the private sector. I mean, they like the cause. Uh, and they and then they like the product, and then uh, the, it makes us easier to to tell them that uh, this is profitable. You can make profit this, and and it will help the inmates. At first, it was like uh, who who will want to help us uh, inmates? Uh, the inmates uh, people look at them as someone that is useless and 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 not worthy for a second chance. That's what I thought, but um, when I, uh, on the process, actually, if we give them understanding, uh, people will un- will will open their their minds and hearts, uh, and that was very interesting uh, for me. The 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 experience, actually, many people do care if we give them uh, our understanding to them, so. Their collaboration is very, very big part of uh, Jira, and and uh, that's one of the key key factors and success of our uh, our our program. That's fantastic. Thanks. I mean, it it reminds me a little bit of being in the classroom, and actually something uh, that Mary said earlier is we work really hard on helping our students understand new value propositions. Uh, so sometimes when you have a, a new design or you're doing something very different, uh, that potentially the cost might be greater than the, the standard operating procedure. But we really do um, try to figure out through understanding systems and interrelationships and collaboration, how actually long-term value propositions could be much much more beneficial for multiple people. I mean, I think 
the way that you approach debate uh, and this sort of idea of critical thinking and even approaching something from two different sides might relate to that. But it, it would also be a, you know, wonderful to get a sense about how you maybe came through your own collaboration to the Rikers Project and then how the Rikers Project, debate project that is, works uh, in collaboration with other institutions and groups. Do you mean how we collaborate as a group and yeah. then also yeah. how we collaborate with other organizations? Internally and externally, I okay. think. It seems like a, that's sort of a value <laughs> that you're espousing and, and mm -hmm. you're, you're sort of yeah. teaching it. But I think it's also interesting, too, because you're a board member, which automatically right. <laughs> you know, talks about this idea that this is established through multiple points of entry. Yes, definitely. Um, so as I mentioned, we are made up primarily of former debaters, but not everyone who works with us is a former debater. Some people just think it's really interesting and like to teach and uh, can see the value in the types of skills that we're teaching. Um, but yeah, we were joking earlier that, you know, as a board, we do argue quite a bit. Um, when you put nine debaters in a room, it's not always easy to come to consensus. But uh, I think we all have the same ultimate goal. And one thing that I really love about our organization is that um, we're pretty much entirely volunteer run, um, with the exception of some stu students that we've hired after they've been released. Um, none of us you know, makes any money. We're all just doing this because we care. And we come from all different professions and backgrounds and, uh, you know, parts of the city, ages, places we've lived. It's just, it's very diverse. And I think we bring a lot of different perspectives to the students that we teach, uh, which I'm, I'm very thankful for. Um, in terms of collaborating externally, um, we do have a class at the Fortune Society, which we launched a few months ago. Um, so the Rikers Debate Project class is one of the options that students at the Fortune Society can take if they choose to. And if you don't know, the Fortune Society is a re-entry organization. So they are their purpose is to help people once they've been released from jail or prison to reestablish themselves, um, to help them get a job, connect them with social services, and also provide educational opportunities. So I, we think they're a fantastic organization. We love the work that they do. And it, it's kind of like you were saying, you know, we can't do it alone. We know that we're helping people in a certain way, but we're not social workers and, you know, we're not providing legal counsel and we need to connect them to other people who can do those things for them. Because coming out of jail or prison is not easy to do and then just get back to your life. And there's so much that's been disrupted that needs to be put back together. So yeah, we, we absolutely uh, need our collaborators and I, I hope that we'll have more in the future as we expand. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think that leads to maybe uh, the last question I'll throw out to the panel, but then we should definitely uh, have some questions from the audience. But you know, what would you suggest as far as, uh, the, you know, I think you, you touched on it a little bit, but maybe Tema or Saj, you can um, comment on what the average citizen can do to get involved uh, in critical issues around criminal justice reform. Because um, quite often in my own classroom, uh, when students identify large systemic, cultural, social issues, um, we work really hard at finding specific, tangible entry points that people feel like they, they can engage. But it could be quite, quite challenging. So maybe um, you might want to comment on, on how you think sort of the average citizen can get involved uh, around these issues. Well, actually, I had this question about one month ago uh, from uh, an event in Indonesia, in Jakarta. I said, I had a simple answer for them at that time. I said, well, the first thing you can do is buy our coffee. You know, we sell coffee in, in, in Jakarta. And so if, uh, I can't say that here, of course, it would be a very far flight to just buy a cup of coffee. But <clears throat> there are many things uh, we citizens can do to help the, the inmates and ex-inmates. First of all, I think it's uh, changing our, our, uh, our way of thinking uh, towards those, those people that are incarcerated right now and, and maybe uh, one day we'll be a free man because uh, I think that that's, that's the biggest problem for them is the way people think of them. I mean, uh, they had 
a very hard life in prison, especially in, in in prisons in like Indonesia, where a capacity of 800, uh, a prison of capacity of 800. Now in Cipinang, there's like 3,700 people inside. It's very, very harsh. I mean, uh, they had, uh, they did crimes that maybe is uh, the cause of uh, social social matters. I mean, I believe that crime is a product uh, uh, it's, a, it's a social product so maybe he had uh, some uh, uh, educational problems or uh, economic problems that made him to fall into a very very dark way uh, that's why he went to prison and then when he comes to prison uh, they are treated like almost I can say like unhumane ways and we, we they, they're treated uh, in a way that's worse than what put them inside before. So, and when they came come out, people treat them even worse. Uh, he's an ex-con. So I think it's, it's the best way to help them is to accept them, first of all, is to accept them as a human, uh, to accept them as a part of us, a part of our community, because uh, whatever he did, uh, it's it's very it will help him very much if we 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 uh, we want uh, we want them accepted back and we forgive them of course but uh, first of all we have to we have to uh, think change the way we think of them I think that that that's that's the main part of what we can pr play in. Uh, Reducing recidivism. It's a very hard word for me. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that answer is just spot right? The uh, stigma right? and how we, um, as uh, people, look at uh, each other. Um, having that label um, uh, really prevents people from actually gaining employment. Um, and, so, um, and so when they're unable to gain employment, they often are led back into the same paths that got them in there in certain cases. Um, but as far as, you know, specific tangible things beyond, um, you know, uh, uh, the human the human relationship is there's tons of programs around the city. Um, if you are, have a particular uh, interest in mentoring, there are tons of mentoring programs and young people who would love uh, mentors. Um, if you are someone who... Um, has access to employment and gainful employment opportunities, willing to take on interns, um, provide them opportunities that they normally wouldn't have access to. Um, if you're someone who uh, may have access to f uh, money or funding, um, donating to these organizations um, obviously would also be greatly beneficial. So I think there's a lot of ways to get engaged. Um, you know, if you really want to be engaged, you know, you can Google it, you can reach out to ITM, we can link you to any of our partner organizations. Um, you can come to our classes and see what it's like, meet our students. Uh, we host uh, Social Justice Movie Nights, which is happening right now. And so, you know, there's lots of ways to be engaged, but I think um, I think you, you, you hit it really um, on the head, which is that, uh, you know, really thinking about the notion of criminalization, right? And if we see these uh, uh, circumstances that people end up as a byproduct of, of, of structural issues, um, then can we really start to humanize people in ways that really um, create a path that leads to alternatives to incarceration? Right? Because as, as he described, incarceration often does not rehabilitate. In fact, it just traumatizes and exacerbates the problems. Thank you all so much. I think uh, it's a perfect time to open the floor up for questions from the audience. Uh, so if we have any questions this evening. No? Yes. Um, I, I think I've just been impressed with the variety of services that they offer. 
Um, so they really try to cover every aspect of someone's life when they leave. They put them in touch with uh, healthcare services, housing services, education. Um, uh, the list sort of goes on, but I think they also have like very specific targeted programs for people who have substance abuse issues, um, mental health issues. They really try to cover every possible need, and they respect the people that they're helping. I, I think that goes a really long way, is just seeing people as not someone who's had their life ruined that can never be repaired, but seeing them as someone who's you know coming out of it and needs to rebuild a little bit. Um, but they treat them with the utmost respect, and I think they offer them just great services to choose from. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, we started um, with uh, collaboration of the Pinkerton Foundation. Oh, my, oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so um, I had actually uh, developed a curriculum for uh, a diversion program that I started several years ago and was also fortunate enough to get private funding to execute the program. And, um, and so it was called the Four A's, which built off of um, certain existing um, diversion programs in the city. Um, and uh, prior to that, in general, my background is in community psychology. And so community psychology, to put it in really sort of a quick way to describe it, is sort of the marriage of public health and mental health. And so really looking at how do you um, have community level impact on mental health issues, um, instead of looking at it sort of from an isolated individual sort of ther therapeutic model that exists currently, look at it more from a public health model. And so that's where my sort of educational training uh, came from. I worked in public health for several years and then uh, kind of on the side was developing this curriculum because I saw the level of trauma that mass incarceration was producing as well as the trauma that most, most of the clients were coming in because I was in the um, health sector. And so wanted to sort of really approach this from a, a more of a systems level. And that's where uh, the diversion program came to be. And, from there, the same fund asked me to come and start this here at the new school. More questions? I just have a quick question. What do most people in Indonesia prison for? Like in the US, it's obviously drug-related crimes. Is it the same there? Um. 80% of the uh, prisoners in Indonesia is uh, drug related too. So it's a very, a very big problem in Indonesia. I mean, it's like every five minutes people die on drugs in Indonesia. So the, the president of Indonesia uh, this past three years has declared war on drugs. So now the, the police and uh, the Indonesian DEA is is pushing very hard and and on fighting drugs, and that brings the prison uh, inmates more and more inside. Uh, now it's overcapacitated. We have uh, like almost all the prisons in in, in Indonesia is overcapacitated, and it's about like uh, each prison is like four times the capacity. See, and in my there's a prison that's a capacity of 500, now holds like uh, 2,700. So we have a room like uh, maybe half this place is like 100 people inside sleeping. They're not sleeping actually. They're somewhere just standing and you know standing and f falling asleep. That's the only way to sleep. Can't you can't just lie down there? Well, it's it's a very very hard situation inside the prison. It's very very inhumane, and it's a very big problem. Uh, when uh, this the warm drugs is very needed, it's, it's it's obviously a very big problem. But the capacity of the prison is uh, not yet uh, ready for 
for all these inmates to come. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, this could be for both of you or all of you. Um, how helpful are like the U.S. government and the Indonesian government with helping your education programs in prisons? So far, I don't uh, have uh, any specific information about the programs in uh, USA and Indonesia, but th uh, I'm sure there are many uh, educational programs. Uh, because uh, I've seen many uh, U.S. Uh, organizations that uh, come to Indonesia with uh, many programs, but I don't have any specific information about uh, how the U.S. helps the edu educational programs in Indonesia. Uh, we partner, for Jira, we, we partner very uh, uh, very much with the Indonesian government, the Ministry of Law, because uh, the prison is uh, managed by the Ministry of Law. So, uh, um, I mean, like, all of this is, uh, JIRA is very, the uh, the minister itself is very helpful uh, for our program. So, uh, the biggest challenge right now is for us to spread our word and and work the, the private sector to uh, grow this foundation to make it better. And maybe our goal is uh, to be a benchmark for other rehab rehabilitation programs uh, maybe across the world because uh, the UN was very interested in us. Uh, they came to the Chipinang prison and uh, they invited us so, to several events um, to introduce uh, our our we are rehabilitation program. I just uh, want to say thank you uh, very much to all of our panelists, uh, Saj, Tema, and uh, Mary. I think uh, at Parsons we work so hard to think about how we can teach systems design, human-centric processes, and I think all of your organizations and your strategies uh, really help us understand the importance of of this mission and and also the the places where we come together and our, our resonances. Uh, so I really appreciate you being here, and uh, for us, it's an incredible honor for our whole community uh, to have you and, and your thoughts. Um, now we'll, we're going to move to a presentation uh, from Jira, so we'll give the stage uh, to Tema and his team. My name is Romy Redono, an inmate with four years sentence to serve. The very first day I got into prison, something really burned at my thought. I was worried and felt insecure about my family, friends, and the most importantly, my future. Being constrained, did not make me lose my will to get better. Along with other inmates who has the same vision towards the current situations, we found Jira. Kalau dicerita bagaimana memulai Jira ini, alasannya ini menjadi sangat personal buat saya. Sebenarnya tujuan dari saya itu sangat sederhana. Ketika saya masuk, harus menjalani masa seperti ini. Saya ingin membuktikan kepada anak saya bahwa ayahnya dimanapun berada masih bisa melakukan sesuatu hal yang baik. Masih bisa berguna buat orang lain. Bahwa perjalanan ini is not the end. Bersama dengan kawan-kawan narapidana yang lain, kami berkomunikasi. Dalam komunikasi tersebut, urun rembuk tersebut, ternyata untuk adanya sebuah kesempatan yang kedua, kemudian untuk adanya sebuah perubahan untuk mereka sendiri walaupun dalam keterbatasan ini. Lahirnya itu justru dari para warga binaan itu sendiri. 
dari mereka itu mau e, berubah, mereka mau menjadi lebih baik, mereka sudah menyesali kesalahan mereka. Tujuan yang sama adalah mengembangkan sebuah e, program yang dimana kita bisa melibatkan warga binaan, khususnya pe kepemudaan, untuk bisa aktif dan lebih bisa berinovasi secara kreatif. Bayangkan di Rutan Cipinang itu ada 3.000 sekian ratus orang yang menjadi inmate. Inmate ini, dan itu wajar, selalu berbicara tentang kapan saya bebas. Mereka lupa bagaimana menyiapkan diri sehingga ketika keluar nanti mereka bisa diterima oleh masyarakat. Salah satu uh, visinya itu ya gimana supaya kita meng, uh, mengurangi jumlah orang yang melakukan pengulangan terhadap kejahatan-kejahatan khususnya apalagi kejahatan yang dikarenakan karena tuntutan ekonomi. Dalam proses berikutnya ketika kami menginisiasi sebuah pelatihan-pelatihan, kita menginisiasi juga sebuah laboratorium kopi maupun kulit di dalam penjara. Ironisnya beberapa inmate yang kami latih, mereka menyampaikan kepada saya bahwa I don't want to go out. Saya di sini aja. Ini sebuah refleksi bahwa ternyata they don't have nothing at outside. Indonesia, like many other country, is facing a long drag situation. Overcrowded prisons, inmate rehabilitation, and high recidivism rates are major issues that have been tried to be solved by the government. JIRA is founded to solve those issues through assist and empower prisoners by giving them the necessary skills and the opportunities to return to their communities. This is the most important thing. Some of the problems that we have in this area adalah overkapasitas, dana yang terbatas, petugas yang terbatas, kemampuan dan pengalaman yang terbatas dari kita. Namun kami sebagai menteri bersama-sama dengan Dirjen Pemasyarakatan dan seluruh jajaran tidak boleh patah semangat. Yang paling utama juga bagaimana Membina para narapidana kita yang ada di dalam ini menjadi orang-orang yang kita harapkan ke depannya. Menjadi orang-orang yang baik, orang-orang yang taat hukum, dan orang-orang yang berguna bagi masyarakat. Sungguh saya sangat bersyukur di mana ada pihak ketiga yang mau bekerja sama dengan kami pihak pemerintah untuk menciptakan beberapa program keterampilan bagi narapidana, membina dan membimbing mereka secara sabar, sehingga uh, membantu proses pembelajaran yang ada di rumah tahanan ini. Sistem kepenjaraan sudah diganti dengan sistem pemasyarakatan. Peran sertanya Jera dalam hal ini memberikan bekal bagi mereka setelah mereka bebas untuk siap diterima di masyarakat. Sini adalah tempatnya masalah. Banyak sekali masalah. Mulai dari masalah keuangan, masalah ekonomi pastinya, masalah dengan keluarga, they have, mereka harus cerai, anak, dan lain-lain. Tapi ujung dari semua ini adalah kepercayaan diri dan harapan. Berujung juga harapannya ini juga menjadi bisa memberikan dampak yang positif untuk kehidupan bagi kawan-kawan yang baru keluar dari penjara untuk tidak melihat lagi masa lalunya. Ya kita harus bina mereka supaya mereka itu bisa e, berubah. Perubahan itu kan sulit. Dia dulu e, negatif, kita harus berubah jadi positif. Pemerintah melihat program Jila ini sebagai salah satu solusi. Saya sangat mengapresiasi program Jila karena betul-betul memberikan perhatian bagaimana menguatkan, mendidik, melatih para narapidana kita untuk menjadi orang-orang yang mendidik. And with the massive number of potential prison in Cipinang prison only, 
we are changing the usual with the all high standard through the strict and high quality controls. Without ignoring every individual's prosperity and assets, we keep moving progressively and productive. Tentu kalau ini berhasil, residivisme akan bisa berkurang. Dan saya berharap bahwa program-program ini bisa dikembangkan dan dikemas dengan baik. Supaya bisa menjadi benchmark di dalam program pembinaan narapidana kita ke depan. With full dedication and compassion the team of warden and the volunteers, they never get tired to lead and help the inmates with their vocational skills programs like leather works and coffee service with professional standards. Saya punya harapan besar. Kalau kita konsisten, jira konsisten, petugas pas konsisten dan uh, membangun jaringan itu juga bisa dilakukan dengan baik dengan pihak-pihak kita yang lain. Yeah, I have a promising picture about this program. Jira has developed an end-to-end -end ecosystem over eight key values. Change, chance, coach, commitment, continuity, community, certainty, and collaboration. Kami melihat di dalam Jira, sebetulnya tidak ada konsep yang terbaik. Dan kami pun belajar setiap waktu untuk bagaimana membangun konsep itu menjadi lebih baik. Program Jira tidak hanya ada di dalam penjara. Semakin banyak para pihak terlibat di dalam program ini, itu juga menjadi salah satu tolak ukur keberhasilan dari program ini. Selama ini memang ada pihak-pihak yang mencoba bekerja sama dengan PARS dalam pembinaan-pembinaan yang ada di lembaga pemasyarakatan. Ini kami apresiasi juga. Tetapi saya melihat bahwa program Jira ini sangat konkret, sangat target spesifik, punya tujuan dan target yang jelas. Ya. Dan ini dapat terlihat dan terbukti dari bagaimana juga Jira membangun jaringan dengan lembaga-lembaga lainnya. Now, after over a year of hard work, we have been acknowledged by the government officials like Ministry of Law and Human Rights the President of Indonesia, and even the United Nations. Saya kira salah satu hal yang menarik uh, Parson Schools of Design adalah keunikan dari program JIRA ini dalam pembinaan napinya. Sehingga dalam suratnya kepada saya, uh, mereka uh, sungguh melihat bahwa program ini promising. And with the will to bring change in a positive way, even with under inevitable boundaries and limitation in this air, we believe that by having and doing the right move, we can make the change. Tentunya, kerjasama dengan Parson School of Design New York merupakan pencapaian yang luar biasa. Tidak saja bagi Jera Foundation, namun juga bagi Rumah Tahanan Negara Kelas 1 Cipinang. Ini merupakan tantangan sendiri untuk menyiapkan lini produksi agar memproduksi produk yang didesain oleh Parson School of Design. Kita bisa menghasilkan kualitas produk internasional dengan quality control yang baik, dan mereka juga tertarik untuk membeli atau mendonasi pelatihan-pelatihan jira lainnya. Kami dari Kementerian Hukum dan HAM will do our best yeah, to support this cooperation and collaboration between jira and Parson School of Design. I truly appreciate Parsons Schools of Design who opens their heart and mind for the purpose of helping prisoners to become a good citizens after their sentence in our prisons. In Jira, we believe that the worst prison is actually our own mind. Don't let condition make you a prisoner of your own mind. Break the habit, break the boundaries, by do good things, start today.
So uh, welcome to the Jira. <laughs> okay, uh, I want. Uh, uh, my name is Tony. Uh, I'm uh, one of uh, co-founder of Jira. I just want to give us uh, some information about. Uh, we learned that in Jira, uh, the mo one of the most important is. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we learned that one of the most important that uh, in our process uh, with the inmate is how to involve them uh, since uh, beginning the program and how to make the program together with uh, them. So uh, with uh, inmates, with inmates we develop uh, eight principles in uh, JIRA, we call the JIRA ways. Uh, they are uh, changed if uh, they, they just come to say it uh, clearly they uh, just say that I want to change and there is a chance and, and their uh, coaching and commitment certainty and continuity collaboration uh, in the fourth uh, 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 the first part is uh, we think uh, in we do it that in uh, in the jail in the, in the prison, but and the rest in uh, that need they need certainty they need continuity then also they need collaboration and community is in the outside of jail. So the program is not just uh, stop in the jail uh, in the prison, but it's continuity in uh, uh, out of jail. So. Uh, this is uh, one uh, of our doing in uh, prison. Uh, we make, uh, we discuss, and then we make a uh, vocational training. And one of our program, uh, uh, beside uh, leather jirabek, we also uh, make a training for barista. And after they, uh, after they come out uh, from the prison, uh, we. Uh, we have a, uh, we call this uh, like a, a cafe. We 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 have a cafe in the in the middle of public, and we uh, this cafe is the function for uh, just like uh, a hub, a hub for uh, for them to continue the uh, what they have in the prison. So. In this uh, in this cafe, all operate by uh, in uh, ex inmate, and then uh, for uh, as a hub, they can uh, work here for four months, and after they uh, will uh, work in the other cafe that we uh, cooperate with us. Uh, this is uh, the person uh, they. Uh, uh, in our cafe in Jira, uh, in outside, and the next, and this is uh, after they work in Jira, uh, in cafe in Jira, they work in the other cafe uh, in Jakarta, and I want close uh, my information with uh, video, uh, with from our uh, apa penjahit mas, yeah. Yeah, our tailor in uh, making a jira bag. Mulanya jalan itu terlihat bebas dan lapang. Tapi ternyata jalan itu ke arah yang salah, membawa saya pada kehancuran. Sudah hampir dua tahun saya hidup di balik jeruji. Dua tahun. Total hukuman 6 tahun, um, tentunya karena narkoba. Sekarang hanya sesal dan kecewa, keluarga menanggung malu karena saya. Istri saya sekarang jadi pembantu demi bertahan hidup, menafkahi keluarga. Anak saya mungkin bisa putus sekolah. Tinggal nunggu waktu aja. 
Tapi setiap orang pernah melakukan kesalahan dalam hidup. Dan saya yakin mereka juga punya kesempatan kedua untuk memperbaiki hidupnya. Rutan Cipinang ini melibatkan saya dalam program Jira. Saya diajarkan manajemen, mengatur diri, disiplin, dan kerjasama dengan teman yang ada di sini. Saya mendapatkan pelatihan keterampilan di sini. Kerajinan kulit. Awalnya sih saya kurang percaya diri. Apakah saya bisa menjahit atau membuat produk-produk ini? Tapi di sini saya yakin. Saya yakin supaya saya bisa membantu nafkah istri saya. Akhirnya saya belajar, belajar sampai saya bisa. Cira adalah kesempatan kedua bagi saya untuk merajut mimpi lagi, menata hidup kembali. Kesempatan kedua yang juga berlaku buat teman-teman. Nama saya Suwitno, umur 40 tahun. Yeah, and uh, now we plan to uh, trying to develop a, a Jira program with uh, the other program in uh, beside uh, Kavi. We also have a header, and also we plan to like a barber, Jira barber, so they can also, and we make a like a, it's like a Jira ecosystem, uh, such like that. So I think. Uh, Enough from me. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. The next, the next part will be gift giving we we brought some uh, our own uh, products from jira and we would like to give this to a few people the first one is for david david is the president of parson Thank you. Yeah. The second one is for Mr. Burak. Tema. Yeah. Yes. We would like to invite both Muriel and Aneta. <laughs> Tema will be given this out to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Terus Abang mas ceritain Oke okay. Sebelumnya saya mau sampaikan Bahwa Ini adalah kolaborasi kita dengan ibu-ibu Dari ekonomi yang lemah Di sebuah rusun di Jakarta Pinggiran Jakarta Oke okay. Dan ini ibu-ibu ini mereka yang buat Uh, uh, both of them would like to share with you that this product was actually produced not only by the inmates but also from uh, a, a few mothers that was coming from a very poorly uh, developed areas and they were actually contributing to yeah. specifically to some of the details that were actually handmade uh, in these two products and they're combining both their work and also the people from the inmates together to make these two products. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, we need some pictures so that they can see their products already in the hands of the, the targeted audience. Yeah. Oh, oh. Jadi bawa. Oke. Okay. Jadi gimana? Uh, mungkin Mas menyampaikan kali secara untuk apa namanya? Untuk pemenangnya. Ayo Bang Tema. Oke, Mas berdiri di depan. Oh ya. Yeah. Uh, about the uh, Competition. We would like to congratulate uh, Miss Haley Grisham uh, for winning the beautiful uh, design for the bag, and we we would like to say thank you very much uh, that you have uh, made this very design, and we are looking forward to make it at the uh, by the inmates. Maybe they'll they'll they'll, they'll start uh, making it when we come back to. Indonesia. So thank you very much and thank you for Parsons School of Design for the opportunity. Yeah. And uh, we also say, uh, want to tell you that uh, there is a certificate for you that signed by our minister. Uh, yeah. But I'm sorry, I'm forget to bring. Because, uh, <laughs> because we, because we, yeah, very uh, unhurry go here, but we have uh, in our uh, hotel. Okay. And I will give you. Okay. Um, with that, we'd like to thank everyone for coming. There's drinks and cocktails outside if you want to network or give your emails to any of these gentlemen if you want to order some of the bags. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>